you to be able to adapt your particular innovation in coordination with the community that you're trying to engage with. I'm Dr Chris Goldsworthy from Oxford University at the Institute for Science, Innovation and Society and I'm a research fellow on the Brigade project. So a lot of people think that the success or failure of a technology is based upon the, the, you know, the scientific effectiveness or validity of the particular technology, but actually as the technology can succeed or fail because of its um, failure to engage with certain communities that end up using it, or the policy makers that end up commissioning the technology, for example. And uh, the research that I do and the, the aspect of the test and implementation framework that I've worked on and continue to work on um, really looks at what it is about the end user groups and the innovation that, that's, that creates the boundary between them that, that stops effective communication for one thing but also fails to consider certain aspects of the, the social categories, the, the usability of the technology in itself. It should really be used as a, as a context-specific device to see how social acceptability is something that changes over time depending on its uses, depending on the context, the space in which is the innovation is going to be used, depending on the end users themselves. The important thing to, with the innovations and the, the social cultural acceptability is that this is not the same as the technical readiness levels. Technical readiness levels are stage-gated, right? But for the social cultural acceptability, you need to think of this as more... Um, an iterative process that continues over time as the thing develops. Um, so you take contextual and very specific instances and see how they develop over time, as opposed to stage gating and, and changing the process as you're doing it. And you can really revisit the same thing over and over to try and understand how these things are getting implemented. Mm -hmm.